Welcome back and uh, this section is going to be about the uh, completion guide for all the field equipment that you need to take uh, to the field when you go to fly your SIG Cadet LT-40. And um, first off you're going to need something to carry all this stuff in and uh, for that I um, recommend uh, this wing tote. Um, very sturdy, nice uh, heavy duty uh, nylon, lots of extra pockets, and I'll show you those in a second. But it, and it'll also hold a gallon of fuel. This is <laughs> obviously an empty gallon of fuel for demonstration purposes. But it's got this uh, uh, flexible section in here uh, that's velcroed down so that the uh, bottle of fuel won't go anywhere. Okay. And uh, then you got pockets on the outside um, to put uh, tools and, and stuff. Um, and there's still plenty of room inside for things. And you got uh, uh, end pockets and uh, two extra to side pockets over here that uh, are good for putting all kinds of stuff in. So um, that's the first thing, and uh, uh, it'll be good to hold, I believe, every, <laughs> everything that I'm going to recommend. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Okay, the next set of items that uh, you want to take to the field uh, is um, the high tech digital servo programmer and tester. Um, it comes in a relatively nice uh, padded case with the instructions inside. Um, it does run on um, nickel metal hydride battery pack, four cell battery pack, but you have to take the pack out to charge it. Um, and so um, um, just be aware that you know you, you're going to have to have something to charge that with. Um, uh, so I like to take that to the field in case a servo goes bad, or you expect suspect that a servo is bad, and um, you want to test it. Um, you don't really need to do programming on the servos that we've got, um, but uh, it certainly is is good for testing. Um, the high-tech servo tester um, I got from uh, Tower Hobbies and it's uh, $70. Certainly is an optional item but I like to uh, carry it. Next is um, the Blue Block After Run Oil. Um, it's a 20cc bottle from Horizon Hobby and it's uh, $3. At three dollars will save you a world of heartache uh, if you let your engine set over the winter or something uh, it might uh, freeze up on you and um, you never know how long it's going to take a drop or two after at the end of the day is really good so need a small bottle of that um, next is a precision screwdriver set um, I like to carry a small group of tools with me so this is a Tektron 16-piece uh, precision uh, uh, driver set, and I, I like the precision sets that have the bottom here, that or the top, I guess, whatever, the end, uh, where those spin and makes it easier to, to turn things. This has both um, um, the small um, uh, hex heads, uh, nut drivers, um, Phillips and regular screwdrivers in various sizes and uh, reasonably nice case uh, although it might break it if you put it on the outside of the box uh, of the tote bag and you bang that around that case might break but uh, so you have to be a, a little careful with it. A couple other tools that I like uh, to carry with me I always like to have a, a set of um, a simple hex head uh, that's the uh, uh, SAE English and this is the metric set so 
These are both from Lowe's, uh, about $5 each, so about $10. And then also from Lowe's uh, for about $10 is um, uh, a six-piece mini plier set. It's got cutters, got needle nose, um, and uh, very handy to have some extra pliers with you. <clears throat> Another nice thing to have, those were, all that was from Lowe's, is a very good pair of uh, forceps. Uh, Precision Instruments, I got these off of uh, Amazon for about $9. Actually, that's uh, uh, two for $9. I got two of these, and I'll uh, certainly have one in the field, and I'll keep one at the bench. Um, so uh, they're about 4 50 each or something like that off of, off of uh, Amazon. And I always like to have a pair of, of uh, horses with me. Um, next is the glow driver to, um, when you start up the engine, you need to, the glow plug needs to have an igniter on it. This is the igniter. This is the, um, uh, from Dynamite, the metered glow driver with a 2600, um, milliamp hour nickel metal hydride battery in it. Well, the reason I like it is it does have this meter on the end and it comes with the charger to recharge it, which is really good. Um, and that's only $20 uh, from uh, Horizon Hobby. Um, next on the, on the um, uh, fuel, the gallon of fuel that you need, you gotta have some way to pump it out. So this is the Dubro unloaded filling station. Uh, unloaded means it doesn't come with anything but the filling station. Uh, but it does come with the uh, hand pump, which is, I think, you know, you really don't need an electric pump for the small amount that you're going to be pumping. has some fuel tubing in it. Uh, has this uh, uh, cap that goes on the gallon of, uh, of fuel, and it comes with these set of parts that go with the cap. Uh, to screw in and places to hook the fuel lines to and a little probe uh, for uh, uh, fueling the engine. And that all sits with this um, on the top of the fuel, a uh, uh, gallon of fuel and with that comes a um, uh, little cup that, that holds the uh, igniter, uh, the glow uh, driver. And you got a place here for um, uh, extra uh, glow plugs if you want to carry some extra glow plugs with you, and a place for a few tools. And that's very handy. I like the way that works. And it's simple and easy uh, to uh, have on the top of a gallon of fuel. And uh, all that can sit in the um, uh, tote bag, as you saw. So the Dubro uh, catalog, no, catalog number 908, that um, filling station uh, from Tower Hobbies is about $35. Okay, um, next is you need to have a, a, a um, way to take the glow plug on and off, and this is the Dubro. Um, four-way extra long socket wrench and uh, it's a simple way to uh, have it um, um, something with you to change the glow plug when you need it. Okay, um, the Hangar 9 uh, digital variable voltmeter um, a variable load uh, voltmeter from Horizon Hobby, uh, which is about forty dollars. Always carry that with me to be able to check the the battery in the airplane before you even start it. So that's quite handy to have. Um, the micro uh, digital uh, tack or tachometer from Horizon Hobby Hangar Nine, and uh, I think I showed you how that worked before. 
So I always carry one of those with me, and that's uh, $28. And I think I showed you this before too, which is the uh, uh, dirt track um, temperature sensor. I carried in a little carrying case. This carrying case used to have a, a small servo in it. Uh, the servos come in nice plastic boxes and save those little plastic boxes because they're great to put in little stuff like this in. So I always carry the the um, uh, Duratrack uh, Flashpoint uh, temperature sensor with me. The next group of items that I uh, always try to take uh, always take to the field with me uh, for the completion guide for everything you take to the field. Um, the next item is a decent pair of sunglasses, and um, I use the Nimbus Polarized. Uh, they come from Rapid Eyewear. Uh, you buy them off of Amazon. They're a high quality pair of sunglasses. Um, comes with a nice uh, microfiber rag. Also comes with a, um, a neck strap. and. Um, they uh, not only look cool, but are, <laughs> uh, but the, um, they are wraparound, which is what you want in the field. You want um, glare coming at you, and the nice thing about this is they uh, also, this, this is the uh, darkest uh, polarized lenses. They also come in the um, carrying bag. They also come with a, a lighter gray uh, set of uh, lenses, plus uh, they come with the um, uh, sort of yellow set of lenses. Uh, normally people use those for uh, uh, hunting and shooting, um, or you can use them on a, uh, on a less cloudy day. Uh, you can switch them out, and uh, it also comes with a with a, uh, the brown colored uh, uh, set of lenses. So de just depending upon your uh, light, sometimes you still want polarized lenses. Uh, maybe it's an overcast sky, but you don't want the real dark ones. It's easy to swap them out and you can have a different pair of uh, lenses. Uh, so those come from Amazon. They're about uh, $97, so they're a little bit more. Uh, but they come in a very nice protective uh, case with all the extra lenses in it and a uh, nice little uh, microfiber to keep them nice and clean. Uh, next thing you're going to want is a hat um, because when the sun is bright you need a brim to keep that sun out of your eyes and I use the um, AMA hat and the reason I like it, you get it from the AMA website, which is the www.modelaircraft.org. Uh, you go to the shop uh, at that website and the caps and hats, and you get one of these shipped to you. They're um, $15. The reason I like them is when you put it on, um, you have this big long brim. Some hats don't have a long brim. The other thing I like is the back of your neck and ears won't get sunburned when you're standing out there all day. And uh, you want to be able to um, um, protect uh, your red neck <laughs> um, from getting a red neck. Um, and this hat, um, uh, you can see I use it all the time. It's got all big sweatband in it. And um, uh, every time I, I'm at the field, I've got one of these on. Uh, it also helps keep the bugs and the uh, gnats and stuff away from your uh, uh, face and ears and so forth and keeps the sun off. The other thing you're going to want uh, to have, or at least I do, um, the uh, transmitter uh, is difficult to hold like this just by itself all day. Um, so I use a flight pad, okay, um, and, it, and you can see the website here, uh, it's www.jerrycoats.com, 
Uh, he's got a phone number and uh, uh, I actually have two of these. Uh, I ordered one uh, about uh, four or five months ago off his website. Uh, you go on there. He only accepts PayPal or write him a check and mail it to him. He doesn't accept credit cards, but he's efficient. He gets it quickly to you. I just bought one uh, several months ago and it came right on time because I paid it with PayPal. Uh, why I like it is uh, this is a uh, the flight pad, the uh, universal um, uh, design, has a piece of Velcro uh, to hold the, the thing in place and uh, it's very easy to put the um, the uh, very easy to put the Velcro around the um, handle of the handle of the transmitter. So you put the handle of the transmitter through the Velcro, and it's there, nice and tight. And when you put this around your neck, um, you can do this all day, and you won't drop it. Um, plus, I find with it um, like this around my neck. Um, it's supporting and I don't have to hold or grip, have a death grip on the thing. You can lightly touch the, the controls and it works very well. The lighter the touch on your fingers or thumbs, it depends upon whether you use two fingers or I just use my thumbs. Uh, it depends upon how you learn to um, fly. Um, there's a debate as to one or two fingers. Uh, I use just my thumbs. and uh, But this helps you um, have a very light touch uh, on the controls because the support of the weight is not by your hands gripping it, it's by the uh, neck strap. And the uh, neck strap is a high quality, uh, nicely padded uh, neck strap, uh, very, very well done. And uh, so the, the flight pad itself is $37 and the neck strap is $27. Uh, I just recommend you buy both together at the same time um, and uh, pay them with PayPal if you have that. If not, uh, <clears throat> mail him a check and he'll mail it to you. So I always have that at the field and use it. Okay, next on the completion guide for things to take to the field, you need to include a fire extinguisher. Uh, it needs to be an ABC. Uh, fire extinguisher that ha that does all three types of fires. Uh, that would be trash, wood, paper, liquids, and electrical. And um, I recommend that you get this at your local hobby store or uh, Walmart or something like that. Um, they're usually about $25. And so you're going to need a fire extinguisher with you. Um, in fact, that's one of the things that uh, the MA says you should have when you're flying a uh, an airplane. Um, next is a uh, Sullivan uh, chicken stick. The, the chicken stick is uh, from Tower Hobbies and it's uh, about four dollars and if you don't want to flip the uh, uh, prop with your finger, you use a chicken stick. The uh, next item is a gallon of fuel. Gallon of fuel right now costs about $25, but the price keeps going up. I use the 15% cool power, um, works just fine. Uh, I get that at my local hobby store, but you can buy it online uh, in a box of four for about $100. Uh, so, um, uh, but I usually buy mine one at a time at the local hobby store. Um, the other thing I have is a small spray bottle that I carry with me to the field contains the uh, isopropyl alcohol, 91%, and uh, with that is a rag uh, to uh, wipe down the airplane to get the uh, glow fuel off. The glow fuel has uh, a lot of oil in it uh, because it's a two-cycle engine. You need a bit of oil in it. It uses castor oil and other kinds of uh, uh, oil in it. That oil doesn't burn, goes through the engine. Uh, the exhaust deflector gets rid of most of it, but you'll still see some film of oil on the on the bottom of the airplane. You need to clean it off. Best way to do that is with the uh, isopropyl alcohol. I also carry with me to the field uh, for my completion guide is a uh, the prop reamer. 
I think I may have showed you this before, but uh, I also carry it to the field in case you break a prop and you still want to fly and your spare prop isn't reamed out exactly. It's nice to have this with you at the field. Uh, the Great Plains uh, four-step uh, prop reamer from Tower Hobbies is about $11. Okay, the next set of um, uh, things, tools, whatever to take to the field as part of the completion guide is you do have, need a, um, a, um, a starter. This is the Hangar 9 uh, uh, Pro um, Power Pro HD starter. Um, comes with a cone that uh, um, you put up on the spinner to start it. The on off switch is here and it comes with um, um, some clips, alligator clips I guess you call them, to hook it to a battery. Um, uh, there are several ways actually to power it and let me explain what they are. First off you can have a, a lawnmower battery. Okay, This is a, inside here, uh, I'm not going to take it apart, but trust me, Inside there is a uh, 12 volt lawnmower battery. I built the box uh, several years ago, um, but I decided that rather than, the, than uh, the alligator clips, I wanted to have it protected, so I have uh, um, uh, banana clips, and uh, I cut these off, put banana clips on, and uh, then, you, then I had to have a uh, a 12 volt uh, car charger basically um, small uh, simple car charger with it um, but I found this was <laughs> it's too heavy uh, to carry around so I don't carry that around anymore uh, the other way to power it and I have powered it before this way is you can get from uh, Tower Hobbies Hobby Co a box uh, for um, uh, attaching to the bottom of this and uh, even though this is Hangar 9 and this is Hobbyco, uh, these two do fit on. And uh, inside here is a 1.3 gel cell. And uh, it comes with a charger so you can charge it. The um, problem I found is the gel cell doesn't last very long. If you're flying a lot one day, you might run out of juice to start your engine with this. Um, and so this is a 12 volt gel cell. Um, use that for a while. Decide there was something better. So what I use here's my uh, 12 volt uh, Hangar 9 power starter, and in here is a uh, uh, four cell lipo battery. Okay, so it's a four cell 3300 lipo battery, and um, on the end of it is a Dean's plug, um, and that Dean's plug plugs into here. So I, so it, when I'm not at the field, uh, it's not uh, connected to anything. The Dean's plug is connected to the um, uh, banana plug uh, plugs, and uh, you got banana jacks here to plug it in. And I built the the box all um, out of uh, simple. Uh, airplane grade plywood and stuff and uh, the bottom section here is where I put my uh, uh, glow drivers okay I actually carry two in case one goes out uh, I have my main one and my second one and they're actually charging in the back back there um, and uh, so you have to have um, a way to power this this lasts a long long time um, Actually, I think I set this up about six months ago. I don't think I've charged this thing yet, and uh, uh, so it'll it'll last a long time because it's a quick um, burst of power, and uh, but not very much uh, duration. So that seems to work very well, and um, uh, that's how I run mine. You can use the gel cell. You can use the lawnmower battery. Uh, your choice. Okay, the next item uh, that you need to have at the field is when you're starting your airplane, 
you need to have a way to restrain it so it doesn't uh, uh, hit you when you start it because it'll start up and start trying to move on you. So you need to restrain it. And uh, sometimes at your local uh, field they'll have a big wooden stand with um, made of heavy um, uh, exterior grade uh, two by fours and plywood and that kind of stuff. Probably has wheels on it so you can roll it around. So an aircraft stand like that is probably the best way to restrain it uh, if your field has one. And if it doesn't have one, and I, there's a field that I fly at uh, on a regular basis uh, that doesn't have one, or actually has only has only one there, and um, uh, a lot of times it gets used for repairs. Um, so I like to have <clears throat> excuse me, I like to have a restraint with me so that I can start my airplane uh, with what I carry to the field. And for that, um, I use a, uh, a cast aluminum uh, machined device that looks like this. This goes in the ground, and then these tubes mount on top, slip on top like that, and um, it's uh, sitting in the ground like this, <coughs> and you put the tail of the airplane <coughs> on the back side, so that if the airplane starts forward, um, this will stop by the tail, and actually when you get ready to start the airplane, you pull the airplane forward so it makes sure it's in contact with this so that when it starts it won't jerk forward even a couple of inches, because that can be dangerous. Um, so um, this is one <clears throat> that I use uh, all the time when I go to a field that doesn't have a way to restrain my aircraft with a big wooden stand. Uh, very handy. Um, unfortunately, I looked at the web. There's a website on here. I looked up the website. The website's gone. Not sure they sell them anymore. Um, um, but there's very similar devices. And if you check. Um, <clears throat> The website called redwingrc.com. That's redwingrc.com. Uh, they'll sell a simple series plane restraint uh, for about $65. Uh, it's very similar in, in this, in that you have this, you pound into the ground, but instead of this being rigid, it folds up, and um, then you put your plane in it and it starts and it won't move and then when you're ready to go you pull the plane back a little um, and the restraint falls down and then you can uh, drive the airplane out to fly. <clears throat> so I enjoy this one it's very easy to take them off when you uh, standing up so you don't have to bend over to, to pull the airplane back um, but I don't think they're available anymore but you need some kind of restraint to, um, to do this.